Brito, thanks, thanks for your time. Um, I, I, my first question is, with the success of One Contra Todos and The Seamstress, do you feel a lot of pressure to, to have the same type of audiences uh, respond to Dom? Well, first of all, I'm very honored and happy to see that Dome is doing well. We don't have the figures just yet, but I feel that here in Brazil, it's really, it's booming. I hear about it everywhere. I buy bread and people, people are talking about Dome. I go purchase food and people are talking about it on the streets. People are talking about it. So I know that it's, it's everyone's talking about it. So I've always wanted and it's always been my intention to really um, touch a lot of people, a huge audience. I think that we have to conquer our own audience first in Brazil. We have a huge audience here. And you know that a lot goes to the American audience, but conquering the Brazilian audience with our own stories is extremely important to me. And when those stories can travel to other places, that's even cooler. So I'm so happy with everything that's going on. What's difficult is the next project, what's coming up. I'm, I'm actually scared. <laughs> well, good, luck, good luck on the next project. Uh, I noticed this story deals a lot with drug use and addiction, especially for teenagers. Um, but what I what it seems to see, I seem to see that the father and the son are both dealing with different forms of, of addiction. Is, is that like a through line uh, for the story and uh, showing the addiction? Yes, that was on purpose. I think we have a lot of shows that talk about drug dealing, but I never see anything meant that I never see any of them showing the humane side, showing how that really impacts a family. You know, when I heard Victor's story, that's what called my attention. I said, whoa, there's a story that talks about this topic that is it's, it's already in a lot of shows, but you know, it's kind of in style now talking about drugs and drug trafficking, but I didn't see any show that talked about the, the human aspect. You have a father there who fought against drugs his whole life. And then in the end, he's extremely frustrated and his son becomes a drug user and he becomes a criminal because of the drug, because he can't handle this addiction. So I think that very few shows in the world face this problem in such a humane way. And that's what I like about it. I like a, a lot more than making it an action show. I, what I like is that family drama aspect. And I think that the first episodes have a lot of adrenaline, a lot of action, but slowly you understand the size, the dimension of the issue of this drug issue in Rio and in this family. But that was um, my intention. Clearly, I wanted people to think about Dom, not just to under not just to see the action part and be interested in that part but i wanted people to think about the drug issue and how much it can really impact homes and how it impacts rio de janeiro our own society yeah the i know here in america um the the covid-19 pandemic shut down a lot of productions um, there was a lot, a lot of movies and films that weren't able to shoot, but I know uh, Jair Bolsonaro was a little bit more lax on COVID restrictions. Did, did, did the COVID-19 affect the production of Dom and, and, and your shooting schedule at all? I was extremely lucky because we filmed Dom before the pandemic, actually, and the first time that we had, just for, for you to know, we filmed the entire series. I mean, the pandemic wasn't even an issue in Brazil yet. And the last day that we shot, it was the day before uh, the, let's say, the confinement in Rio de Janeiro. So what happened? I had absolutely no issues to shoot. 
And regarding Bolsonaro, actually, I think that the pandemic is an extremely serious issue. It's hard to shoot. And I think it's correct. I think it's very difficult. I mean, because I mean, movies and films, you have you have to gather a lot of people together. So we were very lucky that we were able to shoot before. What happened is that when the pandemic began, I couldn't edit. So I had to send bits and pieces to different editors. We had six editors and they would each have bits and pieces. So it took us a lot longer, almost two years to finish that, to do editing and make that, like finish the project. So the pandemic was actually an issue in post-production. The shoot was before the pandemic. It was in March of 2000, well, March of last year. Yeah, the last day of shooting Okay. on the 20th, I think, before the pandemic, thank God. Uh, yeah. The lucky, uh, you guys were lucky for that. Uh, I know you said that this story um, is is really resonates with uh, Brazil and especially in Rio. But when you go down to, you know, Sao Paulo or the, or the, you know, Brazil is a huge country. Does this story resonate the same in in the different parts of the country? I think that it will impact and resonate with all of Brazil because this drug issue isn't just something of Rio de Janeiro. I think Rio is like a small bubble where you can kind of understand the entire process that goes on in Brazil. And I think that the type of drama that I'm showing is more than Brazilian. It's not just Brazilian, it's universal. It's a universal theme. I think a lot of people have drug addict children here or anywhere in the world. And imagine how frustrating it must be for, for parents. And I know that drugs are an issue in the United States as well, and it impacts us as well. It impacts Brazil. Um, Brazil is a place that doesn't produce, but a lot of cocaine like passes through here. And we know that. And we are actually, if there's a next season, we would like to touch upon that topic. And, and my last question, is I, I know you studied uh, filmmaking. You went to film school in in Paris. Um, how how does how did having that experience of studying film at a great institution in Paris affect you as a director and be able to translate that to your home country of Brazil? Something that's very important to me is when I studied abroad, I began to understand my country better. I began to understand how important it was, how beautiful it was, and my relationship with Brazil. Um, I think I became in love with Brazil when I was living abroad. I have this feeling that I had the chance to get to know more of the world. I traveled so much when I was a student. Um, I mean, yeah, you could just take, take a train anywhere in Europe, it was cheap, so I traveled a lot, but that's when, in that moment, that's when I feel that I started asking myself, who am I, where do I come from? What's so special about my country? And that impacted my entire career and it impacts me till today. Those are our things, talking about who we are and telling the world who we are. Well, I really thank you for your time and I, I really, uh, now a, a big fan of you as a director. I want to see all the things I haven't watched that you've uh, made yet. So um, keep on making movies and TV shows and, and we'll keep on uh, watching it all around the world. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. It's an honor to know that. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao.